Your father has been murdered by evil wizard Garth. You, the rightful heir to the throne, survived because... Well, for reason that escapes my logic, that very same evil wizard decided that it would be better to send you to live among peasants than to simply kill you too. Why weren't you killed off then? Well, that's the thing with evil wizards. Their logic does not work the way the traditional logic works. Naturally, once you grew up, you ended up fighting for the throne that is rightfully yours. Since you've been living with an old master, you've been trained properly for that fight. Yes, the incompetence of Garth didn't end when he left you alive and well. If that wasn't enough, he let you live with an ancient arts master. I would say that he deserves what's coming to him, but that's just me. So anyway, once you've been trained, it's time for revenge. Dark Ages has been developed by Scenario Software, which in this case means three people. Todd Reprogl, the developer known for text mode game Caves of Thor, Simple Platformer, Monuments of Mars, Cosmos Cosmic Adventure, and, of course, early installments of Duke Nukem. Afterwards, he also did other things, but they are way too modern to be mentioned here. Alan H. Bloom III, the artist. A high school friend of Todd, he was playing around with graphics on Amiga at the time. He was also working on Super Mario Bros. 3 clone for fun. Yes, for fun. The things people did for fun then. Anyway, Alan Bloom had a level editor for this project of his, so he ended up using that one for Dark Ages. Yes, the art and levels for Dark Ages were done on Amiga using editor created for a fan-made Super Mario Bros. 3 clone, while the game Dark Ages was only released on the PC. No, nothing strange here. Moving on. The third person officially involved in making Dark Ages was Keith Schuller, who composed awesome music. Dark Ages is widely recognized as the first shareware game to feature music for the Adlib sound card. Did I mention that the music was awesome? Before working on Dark Ages, Keith made some games of his own, like Chagunitsu and Paganitsu. I have also read somewhere that initially the game was working very slow, so they've asked a guy that worked for their publisher, Apogee Software, for help. John Carmack. Yeah, that one. The creator of highly efficient game engines for Commander Keen, Wolfenstein 3D, Doom and many others. He was also working for Apogee at the time. Apparently he helped out a bit with some nice assembly lines. Still the game required at least 286 processor to work smoothly. While at the very same time, it was running way too fast on 486. That was quite a common issue with old games. Their speed relied on the speed of the machine that ran them. Let's start with visuals. When it comes to the graphics, it all comes down to personal preference. You either like that sort of aesthetic or you don't. For me, the hero looks uh, like Kevin Sorbo from the Hercules TV series. Yes, I know that this game is four years older than the show, so there is no way for the direct inspirations, unless the showrunners were inspired by the Dark Ages game, which kind of doesn't seem to be very probable. Mm, but 
What a great story would it be if that were true. This game is unbelievably flat. I mean, forget about going up and down. You've got 144 pixels of vertical space to work with. And that's it. I guess that the engine allows only for horizontal scrolling, not that it scrolls much. When it comes to horizontal space, things aren't that impressive either. Each level has exactly the same size, which is 2048 pixels wide and, what I already mentioned, 144 pixels high. Not much really. Fortunately, due to some smart level design, game uses the available space quite efficiently. There are various types of obstacles in your way, be that the deadly creatures or simple pits of lava. To counter that, we are equipped with something of a magical attack. We can shoot energy bolts. As game progresses, our attacks become stronger and more deadly. To some extent, so do the enemies. Generally, this game is about precision and engine exploitation. Every move of yours should be planned and precise. Fortunately, movement mechanics allow for precision. There is no inertia, so the character is easy to control. The amount of time you keep the jump button pressed defines the height of your jump, so you have nice control of your jumping. This matters a lot as there are plenty of places where jumping too high results in losing health. That's good and well used. One thing I don't like about the movement, however, is the fact that you need space to turn around. So if you stand with your back directly next to an obstacle, then you cannot turn around to face that obstacle. First, you need to make a step forward and only once your back is not touching this obstacle, you can finally turn around. What's the big deal, you might ask? Well, sometimes you don't have enough time for such things as there is an enemy going at you. And well, I don't know about you, but I tend to forget about such strange limitations and am often repeatedly surprised that I simply cannot turn at the very moment I really need to. That's a tiny little frustrating bit that cost me health plenty of times. Anyway, engine limitation. What's that about? So, what is outside of the screen does not exist, nor does it move. So if an enemy goes out of the screen, there is no point to wait for it to come back. It never will. However, if you make one step in its direction, you will see it immediately. As if it was lurking just behind the edge of the screen. This obvious game engine limitation is your best ally, as it allows you to limit amount of enemies that you have to fight at the same time. Since the game levels aren't spacious, the obstacles are everywhere. There are hardly any fillers. This is something I actually like, contrary to overly spacious Commander Keen levels. I like compact order and well-used space. As I've already said, each level is of the same physical size, and that size is used well. I like that. Sure, the levels aren't very big, but since they are so compact, it does not take too much time to repeat the attempt once you die. And you will probably die a lot in this game, as it is not that easy. Fortunately, you can save the game. There is one limitation though. Whenever you do save your progress, then what is actually being saved is your score along with health as they were at the time when you were starting the current level. So you have to finish the levels in one go. No saving before difficult sections. That seems fair. What I also liked in regards of saving the game progress is that whenever you die, and the thing is that once you die then the game ends, so whenever you die, game asks you if you want to save a game. This may seem odd, but it's actually a very nice feature. How many times did you play some game, died, and then swear as 
you remembered that the, your last save was done few hours ago. These types of situations will not happen in Dark Ages. First, because you can finish the game in much less than an hour, that's obvious, and second, once you die, you are offered a chance to make a save that will preserve your game status from the beginning of the level you reached with the health and the points you've had then. Isn't that a great feature? I would say it definitely is. What can I say about this game? It plays better than it looks and it looks better when you play it. Well, that sounded a bit like Bilbo from Lord of the Rings. Anyway, what I mean is that it looks way better in motion than when you look at the static screenshots. I must admit I wasn't convinced if I want to play it at first for that very reason. The graphic style is not up to my taste. Yeah, yeah, I know, this is not a worthy approach. After all, graphics in old games should not matter, should it? Okay, I'll address it some other time. For now, let's just say that I didn't like the visuals too much when I saw them on the screenshots, but once I've played the game, it grew on me. Maybe not to the point of ecstasy, but they are okay. The thing I liked from the start, though, is how some levels are smoothly connected. You walk and then bang! Something locks behind you. This is a neat trick that gives an impression of the game environment being much more interactive than it actually is. Another thing I like is that this effect is not overused. Generally, there are three ways that the level can end. In the first type, you have to bring the wise man a requested object for him to create an exit for you. The second type is just going till the end of the map and the last one is the interactive type that I just mentioned. Dark Ages was released in typical Apogee fashion. It consisted of three episodes, first was free and the remaining two had to be paid for. Each episode consists of 10 levels. There are also three difficulty levels to choose from. Between them, the only thing that actually changes is the amount of coins you have to collect to gain health. So on the easy it's 10, on medium it's 20, and on hard it's 30. It may seem that there are plenty of coins lying around, but I assure you, when you play on the hard setting, suddenly you realize that there aren't that many. This game gets better with time you spend with it. Amount of fun and challenges compressed in those small levels, paired with a great music, make Dark Ages a good game. Just make sure to play it at the proper speed. 386 processor should do fine. If you play in the DOS box, then adjust the amount of cycles to a fixed value around 7000, instead of using the default auto settings as then it may get too fast and frustrating. And that would be all for now. As usual, I will post a long play in a few days. See you next time.